manager of the trading bank was a Freemason, the manager of the savings bank was a Jew, and the manager of the development bank was a Catholic. Freemasonry? Yeah. I, I don't define that as a religion. Oh no, it's, it's a craft uh, set up to look after each other. Basically, look after their, their membership. Very secret organisation. So by definition, it's it's not purely secret organisation. It's it's not a religious thing. No. When no. you're talking about religion, religion is one defining aspect. Yeah. But if you are a Freemason, yeah, that doesn't exclude or include, but it defines yeah. perhaps your action. They have no rules on Christ. On uh, you don't have to be a Christian, as long as you believe in a supreme being. Their, 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 their God is the great architect in the sky. It goes back to the 12th century, of course, the Freemasonry. It was a, uh, and very, became very, much more prominent in the, uh, the Reformation. I guess, look, I, I guess I'm at a loss yes. um, to understand how some of these beliefs or this, uh, these doctrines actually manifest in, in life, except that people seem to need a reason to exclude others. Yes, yes. It's the 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 darkest aspect of of human nature is that is that they they feel a reason to exclude others based on a single criteria, and that's all. Yeah, that, that that's a fair comment. The Catholics formed an American offshoot of the, called the Knights of Columbus, which became the Knights of the Southern Cross in Tasmania. So a fraternity, you call it? Yeah, fraternity. Yeah, that's exclude women. Yes. The Freemasons have now included women in, you know, certain certain areas. But it again was to then look after each other. And, um, I understand the whole networking yeah, thing, yeah. but it seems to me as if uh, it's simply some kind of arbitrary reason to form a club to exclude others. Exactly. I and was a member of the Groucho I, Marx. I was, I was a member of the Knights of the Southern Cross for six months, eight months. It was boring. Uh, I didn't like the people involved. You joined because you thought that it was oh, I was asked. advanced. I was asked by this couple of senior public servants to to become involved, uh, to look after each other. That was the basic thing. In other words, do the same as the Freemasons. It's still doing a good job. They, they, they they've got the uh, Southern Cross Homes. Well, look, I have nothing against community uh, input. I I struggle with some of this whenever I hear the the, the word Freemason. Yeah. Um, I have a thousand questions and virtually no answers. In the in the four hours that you and I have spoken, yeah. the word Freemason has come up regularly. Yes. Oh, yes. Clearly, there is more to it than perhaps you're able to define in words. The three stock firms in Tasmania were Roberts, Webster's, and Farmers and Graziers, and it was impossible, basically, for a Catholic to get a job at those places. You had to be either the landed gentry children who didn't study at school. Old money. Uh, old money. Mm. And they suffered because those firms all failed eventually. Freemasonry started to wither in the late 60s. It was the, the fact was that you were aware that there was the Catholics and the Freemasons. That's basically why I've raised it. Mm. What you're saying is that Freemasons and Catholics were mutually exclusive. You could not be a Catholic and a Freemason. No, they, they, that's right. No, they, they, in those days, no. It was you were excommunicated from the Catholic Church. It's. I mean, the, it's the not. The teaching it, of the Church said that you couldn't be a member of a secret society unless the rules were known to the Catholic Church, and they they had the, their their rules and regulations are only confined to their own members. What if you were a secret member? Well, <laughs> it wouldn't it, matter, it, would it? Like if, there were, and there were several Catholics that did. To me, it seems to me just big boys making up rules to exclude other big boys. Yeah. Because they, they don't want, I don't want you to play with my bat and ball, is essentially what yeah. I'm getting to. Don't, well, just one example, from the family point of view, uh, my grandfather Sparks, Bill Sparks, he was a, a Reckonite, which is an offshoot of Freemason. But he was refused permission by his lodge to attend the wedding of his daughter. In a Catholic church. The, it's a Joseph's church in Hobart in 1927. And he just said, well, if, if I can't go to my daughter's wedding... I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Yes. So he, he, he went to his daughter's but wedding. But he actually made a point of requesting an ex some yeah, kind of uh, exemption 
from, yeah. from the ruling, yeah. which he, and he knew what the rule was, yeah. and he made a, he actually requested an exemption yeah. from that rule. Yeah. They turned him down, and yeah. he left. Yeah. Catholics were not allowed to go to a wedding in another church if a member of the if the if one of the parties being married was a Catholic or baptized Catholic. My friend, who I mentioned previously, Jeff Howard in the Commonwealth Bank, he married a Catholic, and they married in the uh, a church up in Devonport, which was her hometown. Then and I, I sought permission from my parish priest, and he it was refused. So I, I could not attend the wedding of my friend, best friend. Why was it important for you to uh, adhere to this to this? Uh, well, wedding? I assume it, treated, it, was, it was a treated as a mortal sin, breaking the church's law. What's your interpretation of of, uh, of that ruling, based on your <laughs> hind hindsight now what and a your perspective? What a complete waste and utter waste of time, stupidity. It was wrong. I was wrong, but the church was wrong.